So another fairly simple and straightforward lab, fairly qualitative, sort of learning some experimental techniques and some principles, not a lot of calculations that we have with this lab, which is going to be on chromatography. So some basics to think about with chromatography. Chromatography generally has a few uh, common pieces. There's going to be what we call the stationary phase, and like the name sort of implies, it's something that sort of sits still or doesn't move within your experimental system. You're going to have a mobile phase, and the mobile phase passes over the stationary phase, and as we'll see in our examples from today, that mobile phase can actually have different phases. It can be liquid or it can be gas as it flows over the stationary phase. In general, what you're doing with a chromatographic method is you're doing a separation of a mixture of analytes. So you're gonna have analytes that maybe start out all together and how much they're separated has to do with essentially the stickiness of the analyte for the stationary phase versus the stickiness or willing to move along with the mobile phase. So at its core, stickiness is really intermolecular forces. So we're continuing to think about those intermolecular forces that we've seen in previous labs here. And basically the stickiness of the analyte your substance for the stationary phase is going to determine how quickly it passes with the mobile phase and through your chromatography apparatus. Highlighting again, that mobile phase is usually a liquid or a gas. Um, uh, liquid chromatography or gas chromatography is what we're going to see here. But again, these are all sort of principles of chromatography. We're gonna be doing two kinds of chromatographic methods today. We're gonna be doing paper chromatography of various angles. This is a form of liquid chromatography. And then we're gonna use gas chromatography to analyze a variety of different solvents. And then in a mystery way, you're gonna to try to determine which two solvents you have in a mixture of two solvents. Okay. So first let's talk about the paper chromatography. Nothing really overly complex here. You may have even done this in an, in a high school or even elementary sort of science class. Basically what we're gonna be doing is using a piece of paper that's going to be our stationary phase. We're gonna mark a line on that uh, uh, paper in pencil. Pencil's super important here because we are doing a chromatographic separation of inks. Pencil being graphite is basically not going to move. It's going to remain wherever you put it on that stationary phase. You're gonna use a variety of different inks and you're going to make spots along your pencil line. Now, we're gonna have all kinds of different inks. We're going to have water soluble inks, washable inks. We're gonna have permanent inks, um, all kinds of different inks that you can grab and you're going to um, look at how they travel uh, with different mobile phases here. So stationary phase is gonna be our paper. Our analyte is going to be this mixture of inks that we have that we're gonna spot on our pencil line. Our mobile phase, after you sort of create this piece of paper with all of your ink dots on it, you're gonna put it inside a beaker that has one of four possible solvents. That's your mobile phase. Um, we're gonna have a few people either doing ethanol acetone or toluene and everybody else is going to do water we've seen sort of these substances before when we did our alcohol solubility lab water was a very polar solvent we had hexanes that we used for nonpolar solvents we're using a very nonpolar solvent here called toluene and then we saw acetone in our waters or in our uh, alcohol solubility lab remember that was kind of a hybrid sort of an in-between polar and nonpolar ethanol is sort of the same way not as polar as water but not as nonpolar as toluene so at the end of the day capillary action is going to be what draws up that solvent, that mobile phase, through our stationary phase, through our paper. And the inks are going to have a question to answer. Do you want to stay stuck and sticky with our stationary phase and stay stuck on the paper? Or do you have an affinity for the mobile phase and you want to move with it and move up the paper? Again, maybe you've already seen something like this. I'm gonna show you some examples of what you might see here. So again, here's a whole bunch of different ink samples, okay? And we've got the four solvents here. I'm not gonna run through which is which, but hopefully you're already starting to think about if I've got a water soluble marker and I'm using water as my solvent, what do I think might happen to that ink versus a water soluble marker and then a nonpolar solvent like toluene? 
What do I think is going to happen, happen with that ink? Again, that solubility piece, that who does my ink want to interact with? Like dissolves like sort of comes into play here. Okay, a little bit of quantitative data we're going to gather from this is you are going to mark the distance from your pencil line that your solvent travels, and you'll have to make sure to mark this before you, as soon as you take it out of your, um, we call this a developing tank or a developing chamber, just your beaker with your solvent. Because this, if you have a very volatile solvent, will quickly evaporate. So we wanna make sure we wanna know where that solvent line is. That's sort of the fastest that anything could move is with the, you know, if this is a race, at the very front of that race of our mobile phase. Okay, and then you'll mark sort of how much your dyes travel. Now you'll notice with many of these, the dyes travel with the mobile phase. So in that case, these purple and orange lines might be the exact same number. What you're gonna do is you're gonna calculate what we call an RF factor. That's the ratio between the distance that the dye travels and the distance that the solvent travels, understanding that this is going to be some fraction less than or equal to one. For anything that migrates with your solvent front, the RF is going to be equal to one. Anything that travels more slowly and travels less than that distance, again, your numerator is gonna be a smaller number than your denominator, that's gonna be an RF factor less than one. So there's a spot here on your lab handout where again, you're going to say what your ink sample is, you're gonna make some qualitative observations, you're gonna measure the distances that both the solvent and the dye travel and use that to calculate an RF value. So you remember here, I talked about there being four possible solvents, you're only going to do one of them, so you'll have to make sure to look at a neighbor and look at somebody else who has a different set of um, inks and solvents and try to sort of get the big picture of everything that we could see here without you doing every single experiment. Okay, so that's our paper chromatography experiment. What we're gonna move on to after that is to do gas chromatography. There's another video online that can be really helpful in understanding how to use this piece of equipment, but at the end of the day, it literally is a black box. In science, we say something's a black box when we don't understand how it works. You're gonna understand how this black box works. Basically, a GC, or called a gas chromatograph, is going to have a mobile phase, a gas mobile phase that moves through. Now remember, our paper chromatography had a liquid phase that was our mobile phase. So in this case, we're going to have a gas mobile phase. This is gonna be a very simple gas chromatograph. I'll show you in just a minute a picture of what a more complicated one might look like that you might use for research purposes. But in this case, we're gonna have just air that's flowing through here and moving anything that's in the gaseous phase through our instrument into a detector where we're going to be able to detect it. So you're gonna use a very special syringe that's going to allow you to inject your analyte, your sample. So you're gonna inject your sample into uh, an inlet port in your gas chromatograph and it's going to stay a liquid and it's only going to get to travel through as a gas when we vaporize or boil it or when we reach the boiling point of that solvent. So this is a really key feature to understanding how this particular gas chromatograph works is we are only gonna to get to travel through it once we go from the liquid to the gas phase. So this is temperature controlled. Okay, there is going to be a changing temperature this in this gas chromatograph. And so our stationary phase really is molecules staying in the liquid phase until the temperature of our instrument is greater than the boiling point of that substance. And then it gets to go live in the gas phase and then it can travel with our mobile phase and go through our instrument here. So what are you actually going to see here on this instrument? You're going to see a plot that looks like this. So I don't have the y-axis labeled here because we're just measuring the signal of something going through our detector. So what's gonna happen as you start at time equals zero until you get to, in this case, time equals five minutes, we're gonna program this instrument that we're gonna start out at temperature equal to 45 degrees. We're gonna increase the temperature 10 degrees every minute, okay, slowly ramping up our temperature. And so we're gonna end at 95 degrees. So that's a 50 degree sort of range, 10 degrees per minute, 50 degrees total, mean over a course of five minutes, we're going to be changing from 45 until 95 degrees. So think about this if this makes sense. 
my molecules have to sit. When I start this race, they have to sit still because they're in the liquid phase until the temperature reaches their boiling point. Once it reaches their boiling point, they volatilize and then they get to move along with this mobile phase. What's gonna happen is at that temperature, corresponding again to that time, they're gonna to get to travel through and our signal is going to register that we've seen those molecules pass through. In this case, this is what all of these samples are going to look like when we just have single samples. We're gonna see one peak because we only have one compound that's in there. What we're going to take note of is what time this instrument or this uh, analyte comes through our instrument. We call this the retention time. And again, this is gonna be characteristic for whatever temperature that substance got to go into the vapor phase, be volatilized. And we have intentionally chosen solvents here, molecules that have different um, uh, boiling points. So they're gonna have different retention times. And so this is going to be characteristic. We're gonna have uh, four or five different uh, substances that you'll have here. They're all going to come out at characteristic times, which are unique to that molecule. Okay, so what you're going to have then is you will have a mixture of two of these mixed together. So when you ran that, run that uh, unknown sample, you're going to see two peaks that come out and you're going to try to match then those two retention times to the known retention times of the individual species and try to tell me what are the two things that you have in your unknown. And that's really the only question that we have to answer from this is you're going to identify the two things that are in your unknown and then explain how you made this determination. Use what I just talked about here as a way to identify what you think you have in your sample. And that's it for our uh, smaller, shorter lab here on chromatography. One last little extra piece. I wanna just let you know how a more sophisticated chromatographic method would work. So gas chromatography typically will have a built-in uh, stationary phase. So again, here we're gonna have some carrier gas. Often this is an inert gas. Again, that's gonna be flowing through what we call a column, okay? And that column represents our, um, our stationary phase, okay? Our mobile phase is this carrier gas. Our stationary phase is going to be this column. You can think of it like if you were gonna be going through a water slide, right? You've got your mobile phase, which is the water, and it's causing you to flow through this water slide. Now, if you happen to encounter a patch of that water slide that you happen to stick to, you're not gonna come through as quickly as if you were to just sort of keep going through. So your stickiness, if you will, for the water slide determines how quickly you come through. Now, what's unique about gas chroma uh, chromatographic methods or gas chromatography is there's lots of different column materials that you can choose that will have different levels of stickiness for all kinds of different analytes. Again, what's gonna happen is you are then gonna measure by using um, a detection method all the different things that are going to come through. Sometimes you'll have something that measures the masses of things that come through. We call this G -A G -C -M -S, that's gas, chromatic, uh, gas chromatography with mass spectrometry. So there's all kinds of acronyms we can use here, a lot of times to identify what is the method of detection for stuff as it comes through our GC. So the GC does the separation, and we have all kinds of different ways that we can use to detect our analytes, a really important sort of uh, tool in the chemistry laboratory.